Hello everyone, welcome to Karakil Neolithic Burial Complex in County Sligo. Okay, I've been wanting to come here for a long, long time. One of the biggest and oldest Neolithic complexes in Ireland. It's amazing. This is Brick Leave Mountain or the Speckled Mountain. We're going to continue on up to the top of that. Over there you can see Knocknare with Maeve's Cairn on top of that. The cairns on all these mountains. Another one just on this other plateau over here. Passage Tomb. And they're all orientated towards Knocknare. Looking forward to getting up there. There's uh, three sort of main passage tombs are most visited. And that's the ones we're going to see today. Do a bit of investigating. I think there's another couple of people up here. But it's a Monday morning in October. Hopefully they'll not be too busy. Not far now. That's a view out to the west. There's mountains all around. And that's where we're going up there. To see the cairn. A couple of folk up there. Quite an easy path. A bit rough, but it's not very steep. Kind of view to the east, nearly at the top, just this last little rocky crag. But uh, oh look, that's Loch Arrow down there, along the mountains, Loch Nare. It's an amazing place. Really calm today. Quite eerie. Um, make our way on up to the top. Can't wait. Wow. Here we are guys. Three kind of main cairns. This is Cairn G. Just have to show you this view again. I'm blown away. It's Loch Arrow, as I say, in the east. What an incredible place! I hope you can see it. The secret mountain, Crook Patrick, is just there in the mist. like to get a feel for the atmosphere of these sacred places. This is one special place.
Let's investigate the cairn then. Passage Tim. Just wanted to get the raven in, flying around. Seems they usually get them at these places. It's just flying around the back there. We like to live on cliff edges. There's no shortage of those. Wow, I'm inside Cairn G. A little bit emotional actually. That's the entrance as you can see me coming in. Lovely roof box. Sun comes in through the roof box. And sunset in midsummer. And the moon also comes in. Full moon um, at Salwyn, I think it is. Or is that the winter solstice? I think that's the winter solstice. There is a Salwyn alignment. You see the slot in the, this stone. Which is pretty unique. It allows the sun to shine in a shaft of light on the 31st of October in Salwyn. This is the main chamber. Eight nicely matched orthostats. Nice corbel type ceiling. Three recesses. This is where the cremated remains of those who were meant to be here were placed. Men, women and children. There's children's bones placed up on these little shelves. Separate from the adults, but the bones were three to six inches thick on the floor of each recess. Unfortunately the floor's all broken up. Would have been limestone slabs at one time. All these places tombs, but I heard someone else say they were a repository for human consciousness. That kind of struck a chord with me. Of course, we've got a little experiment set up. Unfortunately, I forgot to bring my full spectrum camera, but there should be enough light coming into the chamber, hopefully. Got a nice little white decorated feather. Possibly something they could have identified with. Any spirits that may be still here. Of course, white quartz was sacred to them. I set up a little pendulum of clear quartz on a metal tripod. And it hasn't stopped since I set it up. I've got my EMF meter and I brought a singing bowl which I'm going to ring to try and raise the vibration before I leave and let the experiment run. I don't know if anyone's ever tried anything like this before. Um, it'd be interesting to see if anything. So you don't direct with the experiment. Brought another little EMF meter today. It lights up LEDs. It only starts reading at 1.5 milligauss. Excuse the elastic band, has to hold the button down. 
So if we get a reading on this, that should be an indication of a good strong reading. change over to directional mic just have it pointing on into the chamber towards the experiment not that there's any noise outside today but it'll help experiment done, Karen G. Just managed to get 15 minutes before it got a bit busy. Still tourists turning up. I'm going to make my way on up to this next Karen. Karen H, I think this one's called. Sad story with this one. Early 1900s, I believe there was dynamite used. They went in through the top. The passage has collapsed a fair bit. You could maybe squeeze in there and lay down, but I don't fancy it much. That's a shame. Crowds of people down there now. I'll go this way before they all start heading up this way. I'm hoping to repeat the experiment in Cairn K where you can still get access. But, uh, probably have to wait. And nothing you can do. Let's head up before they get there then. At the top, it's like the highest point. There's a wee marker just over there. Beautiful passage team. Karen K. Of course, I'm going to take you in. So, I'd like to give my experiment another go while I'm here. Absolutely incredible place. Visibility is not brilliant today. Not too bad. 
Ooh, this is the highest point then. That's the south. I'll give you a 360. West. See Crook Patrick. It's a bit more faded now, you might not be able to see it. Come around to the northwest, that's Knocknaray over there. North. Round to the east. We have Loch Arrow. That's Cairn Kay. Back to south again. Absolutely amazing. Just realising this is actually another cairn. Of course it is. Totally ruinous. See another one over there. I think there's 14 cairns in all. Some are uh, unexcavated. Pretty amazing. There's 21, I believe, in the whole Karaoke complex. Spread out over the mountain tops. A little bit of a breeze up here at the top. It's nice though. Atmospheric, very atmospheric. It's back to Cairn K. I have a theory that each one of these cairns was had top layer of white quartz on it. The people who built these certainly believed white quartz was sacred in some way. Perhaps they knew about its uh, energy amplification properties. Just imagine these, each one of these on top of a mountain, glistening white in the sun. Beautiful thing. Let's have a look inside Cairn K then. So here we are, Cairn K. Let's go in. Oh, that's a lot tighter to get in. I'm going to have to take my bag off. in here. Wow. Quite a long passage. Over 15 feet. I'll leave my bag there. I'm blocking out all the light that's getting in. This is in the chamber now. Wow, disorientated. I'll need to get my light. There we go. That's better. I feel I should whisper. Beautiful corbel ceiling. It's a lot fancier than Karen G. Stand up. Wow. It's very nicely constructed. It's a real engineering job. No light box on this one. I'm still orientated towards the setting sun and the 
summer solstice. Imagine it'll light up this chamber beautifully. Same again, I've got three three recesses. Again, I think these were up to a foot of uh, bone fragments and pottery shards in the bottom of those chambers. Oh, there's that stone. I've read about this. That stone, isn't it gorgeous? It's said to mirror the shape of Croke Patrick Mountain, which would probably, uh, yeah, could be roughly aligned with that, I'm sure. I haven't got the compass with me, so I'm not sure, but. It's said that that's meant to represent Croke Patrick, which would have been sacred even back in Neolithic times, long before Patrick. Beautiful. Look at that, all the packing stones. Get my experiment set up again while it's quiet. Um, all the other tourists, I think, have gone back down, but you never know how long you'll get. So let's get going on that. That's me just about set up. Just me on the little meter. Again, we've got a little feather pendulum, some white quartz. Hopefully, you'll see that okay once I take this light away. So I'll give this thing and bell a quick ring, and I'll let this run. Oh, what's that? Big furry caterpillar. <laughs> Unusual. Very unusual. Brought you over to the east side of the plateau. 
just before I head back down. Lovely Loch Arrow. Uh, plateau drops off here, there's a big valley. Over here's the next, the highest point in the next plateau. You can see a cairn on the top of there. So this area kind of mirrors the shape of the lock as far as that goes. I hope you can distinguish the different layers of land there. This area was a large Neolithic settlement. There's the remains of over 180 stone foundations of the Neolithic houses. It's incredible. So they had their ancestors up here, above them, looking down. Amazing, amazing people. Absolutely amazing. What did they believe? Obviously the earth was sacred. Sun, moon. Stars, the spirit world too. Uh, I'm convinced they were really connected with the spirit world and the natural world as well. Who were the keepers of these of this knowledge? You know, when when they got here roughly six thousand years ago. Uh, these people came from the France, northern France, I believe. It's obviously an already established um, community and way of living, well established beliefs. So, who carried those beliefs with them to here? Who were the keepers, the wise people? Did they have a druidic figure or a group of druidic figures? No one knows how old the Druids, or how far the Druids go back. I don't know, it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Just show you down here, this is... This is known as the Rocking Stone. I'll go down and show you that just before we head back down. See if it does rot. Just a glacial deposit, that one, natural feature. Time for a quick coffee before we head back down. I uh, just wanted to show you this little stone box. It's just behind Cairn K, which is up there. Remains of a kist. Not sure what period that would date from. Could be uh, Bronze Age, maybe. Let's have a coffee then. Noise, no matter where you are now. 
my dice. Apart from that, it's just bliss here, peaceful. What we have here really is uh, passage tombs to my mind, a uh, man made cave. Um, what, what did a cave mean to these people? Well, caves the portal to the other world or and or the womb of the earth. So I'm thinking these passage tomb, tombs are shaped like a womb, passage in the chamber womb of the earth and they're penetrated by a shaft of light. So what usually happens then is conception. Is that uh, rebirth as in reincarnation or new life, new life in the other world? No one knows really. deeper you get into the subject of the Neolithic people and the Bronze Age and so on, you just come away with uh, more questions than answers. Unfortunately it's a, a really a lost, a rich culture that's been lost. Such a shame. You can only guess at a few things and speculate from archaeological finds and that. I find it fascinating. I'm so glad uh, places like this still exist, 6,000 years after they were built. Well, I'll start to make my way back down. Really enjoyed being here today. I think I've connected with nature and the earth again. I feel more peaceful than I did this morning. Let's go then. This is the rocking stone. It's quite something. Take it out. Finely balanced. Does it rock? It doesn't look like it would. Need a bit more force than a human. Just a glacial deposit, a bit of a flick. Strange one, hey? Eh? Suppose I'll have to push it and try. <laughs> no, no, no. You need Key Holland to rock that one. I think that's it for this episode guys, I hope you enjoyed it, I've really enjoyed being here today. It's a, it's a really special place, really special. Thanks for watching, take care, hopefully see you on the next one then. Bye for now.